Welcome to another episode of Hub Chat. Today we are joined by Robert. Thank you for joining us, sir. It's all right. My pleasure. Nice one. Uh, so the purpose of these chats is just to allow you to give uh, you know, a little bit of an introduction about yourself so we can all get to know each other a little bit better. So if you could start by just giving us a little bit of uh, in, um, an insight into the projects that you're working on at the moment. Yeah, sure. Um, it's probably best if I start with what I actually do as well. This help. guy there. <laughs> so I'm a, a graphic designer or a design director for a studio. We're okay. based in London and we do predominantly branding and rebranding. Okay. Um, we do a lot of brand creation, which is everything from uh, tone and voice, strategy and DNA for mm -hmm. brands, all the way through to naming, logo, identity and rollout as well. Very cool. Um, at the moment and for the last year or so, we've been super busy with a real mix of clients from different sectors. Mm -hmm. We work all over the clients internationally. Um, I've been doing a CBD brand in Canada for the last year. Mm -hmm. We're currently doing uh, a mental health um, community website and fashion brand. It's actually based on the island here. Very cool. We're doing a lot of other projects through CBD as well, uh, nice. but we don't just limit ourselves to that. It just so happens that we've uh, in managed. that niche. Yeah, it's like one thing just rolls into the next. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we're now doing like female wellness products as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing some projects in hospitality and a hotel and then a few other things as well. Cool. So is it you, the full team is in the UK, is it? Or? Uh, yes. So we have an actual studio on Rivington Street mm -hmm. in London, so right in the middle of Shoreditch. Yeah. Um, but we're kind of, up until recently, we've all been pretty remote and everyone yeah. kind of has their own spot. Cool. We were set up for like remote working way, way before COVID, so it yeah. didn't really change anything for us. Nice. And then, obviously, recently opportunities arise and a studio space came available at a very good rate due to people moving sure. out of the area. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been extremely lucky that we've been quite busy for yeah. this period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, we moved, we moved in. Perfect. So when did you start, um, when did your kind of story start with this, with this type of work? When did you start designing and stuff? University. Yeah. I, fe I fell into design kind of by accident. To be mm -hmm. honest, it was one of those classic things of it was the one thing I was all right at college and yeah. went to uni and ended up just kind of falling on my feet quite quickly there. Very cool. And uh, ended up having a job in London doing graphic design for Urban Outfitters just cool. when they started in Europe. So I was like an in-house graphic designer doing print for them and lots of stuff for their website as well. So very cool. Yeah, just like kind of hit the hit the ground running with that. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> and then. That proceeded to progress with working in agencies and studios in London, um, doing magazines and print, and then ended up moving to Berlin, and then working in Berlin, and then nice. moving to Copenhagen. So just snowballing, yeah, around. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. So just putting it back to to our, uh, Ibiza, we are here, obviously. Yeah. Um, when did your story with Ibiza start? Um. Probably about a year ago. It uh -huh. wasn't actually somewhere that I, t I even imagined I'd live. Mm -hmm. I think we, me and my wife and my, my son, we both, we all wanted to kind of get back to living in Europe. After we'd come back from Copenhagen, we, we moved back to kind of appease the parents and uh, be in the northwest of England. And it was like the worst decision we'd made. <laughs> trying to like undo that. Okay. And um, I think the plot, the plan and the plot was to kind of basically get back to Europe and be somewhere. Mm -hmm. And obviously things like uh, COVID and things were, we didn't really realize they were happening, obviously. Mm -hmm. We were kind of trying to make plans to get back somewhere and those weren't happening as quick as we wanted. And we were actually just on the island and decided to come here just to break things up and start yeah. getting out. And then everything happened with obviously the pandemic. Yeah. We were like, let's just make a full go of it. And it just Wicked. cemented that we wanted to be back in Europe. And yeah. I don't have to be anywhere for my job. Luckily, yeah. I'm in a very good situation that I can do my job from anywhere. So yeah, amazing. It just allowed me to, to be here. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, what would you say to the people that are maybe sat in London or New York or, or Berlin and they've thought about moving to IB for, um, but they haven't done it? I think Ibiza is one of those quite special islands and I'm discovering it more and more, I think, as every day goes by here. Yeah. It's one of those things that has this very, like, uh, preconceived notion of what Ibiza is. For and, sure. And it's totally the opposite. I think yeah. you don't have to be this uh, raging party goer to get the most of the island. There's so much more, like, rich 
interesting things that are here for sure for everyone's taste and for everyone's yeah kind of interests yeah yeah, yeah. um for us it's just big thing is a climate change we've yeah. lived in really cold countries like yeah. berlin it has its nice summers but then it has its extremes so they had really really cold winters and then obviously scandinavia is like yeah, Baltic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we have the bonus of that, but then I just think it has something for everyone. It feels like it's big enough and small enough at the same time where sure. you always have something to do and it's always somewhere new to explore and go. So it's if you're quite outdoorsy like myself, it's quite nice to go out and cycle or walk and sure. there's always things to go to. Yeah. Um, but it also has like a really small community, I feel, already. Like, I feel like I made more friends in the first two weeks of being here than I did the whole time in the northwest of England. Yeah. And it just like once you, once you meet like one person, it just opens up this like huge bubble of like there's more and more people. And it, yeah. It is really connected here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like very, very connected. <laughs> yeah. So just, uh, just on that, on connections and whatnot, obviously we're at the hub at the minute, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and wh- how would you describe the hub to someone who hasn't been here yet? I would say it's it's actually a very small community of people, which I like. Um, I've worked in so many studios and design studios and co-working spaces over the years that I'm actually really pleasantly surprised at the kind of uh, the the space that you've created, the attitude of it has, and and also the kind of environment that it creates. Mm-hmm. It's a for me, it's the perfect place to go get things done. So there's the utmost like importance on actually being able to have peace and quiet and yeah. get things and concentrate. But it has this sense of the more and more you hear, the more and more people you know, and it, it feels very small and and, and like a, a real tight knit group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it has that good balance. To be honest, wicked. So that's nice nice one. Yeah, wicked dude, and uh, you know, just to wrap up, we're kind of we're trying to inspire people in a minute, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you look back on your career, what is the thing you're most proud of? <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> um, there's a couple of like standout moments, I'd say, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it's always been just like kind of reaching these milestones in design, and I think I've worked with such a massive mix of clients over the years that. There's, there's a couple of key points that were like, okay, that feels like a real moment of yeah. like, you step back and go, that was quite nice. And it starts off with like the simplest things. When I was younger, I was doing stuff for a lot of cycling brands. There's mm-hmm. a cycling brand in Cologne. But just making, taking a product and designing something. So I did a lot of graphic design for them. And you have like bikes that kids are riding around on in the street. And you're like, oh, right, I designed that. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. And it's like obviously been a global release and you're kind of seeing a product that's taken from your screen that's put into like Amazing. the world for the first time yeah 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 um, I think I had that at the very start of my career and in the middle doing stuff with people who I obviously looked up to was great so I did a, a kind of a digital site and online store for Klaus Warman who was the guy mm-hmm. who did um, the Beatles Revolver album cover he's a very really cool. famous German artist that was nice and then I'd say more recently it's been that those moments of when it's such so so grand and there's a massive sense of grandeur with it where we did stuff for um, the UN um, recently. It's through, we, we do a lot of work with Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. on a, an NDA, so we can't actually put a name to it, but it's quite nice to just to kind of know that we've done that work. And they had a, um, a global summit last year, it was in the news, and it was just when it was very pro all about climate change. We did lots and lots of graphics and this all the press for the whole week. It was just basically all global leaders and all summit leaders and, um, you know, these figureheads of climate change and real shift of change in the world. Yeah. We just stood in front of all our graphics for like the whole week and it was super interesting. Amazing, like, man. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, I can't really tell anyone, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. But just like, yeah, I think it's, it's it raises the bar and I always say it's like, um, it's like a video game. Like each time you try to accomplish something, it just levels up of what the next thing you want yeah. to accomplish. So 100%. Like yeah. We've been saying the exact same thing recently. You yeah. know, it's like we, there's like the end of level boss every yeah, yeah. now and then, you know, where it's like when it gets super difficult, you're just about to break through, yeah. right? Yeah. I can totally relate. And I think once you a- accomplish that, that next thing you maybe you don't even realize that's that's your your goal it's yeah. like okay that's done now okay, what's next and it's like kind of upping and you know yeah, if it's yeah. more reach or if it's more global impact or just more press or whatever it may be it's it's quite interesting how 
your kind of your goal shift, I guess, over time. Sure. Yeah, they're always just there, right? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. always out of, out of touch a little yeah. bit. Like, nice. You don't realise they're there until you do it. Sure. It's quite a nice thing as yes. well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, thanks for taking the time, man. Of course. Nice one. Yeah. Cheers, dude.